أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وجاء فرعون ومن قبله والمؤتفكات بالخاطئة فعصوا رسول ربهم فأخذهم أخذة الرابية إنا لما طغى الماء حملناكم في الجارية لنجعلها لكم تذكرة وتعيها أذن واعية فإذا نفخ في الصور نفخة واحدة وحملت الأرض والجبال فدكتا دكة واحدة فيومئذ وقعت الواقعة وانشقت السماء فهي يومئذ واهية والملك على أرجائها ويحمل عرش ربك فوقهم يومئذ ثمانية يومئذ تعرضون لا تخفى منكم خافية صدق الله العظيم In the previous ayahs as we talked about them in our previous session Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the importance of believing in the Day of Judgment. And He mentioned some facts that will be taking place on the Day of Judgment. We talked about the reality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it al haqqah And we talked in detail about what is the reality of the realities of the world. After mentioning all of those, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the nations who rejected that belief, the belief in Akhirah, the belief in the Day of Judgment. And here in these ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is specifically mentioning the names of some of those nations. And then mentioning the punishment that these nations went through and we all can attach the reason with the same that the Surah started with and that is not believing in the Day of Judgment. Before going into talking about these nations, very briefly, I would like to explain the destruction and the cause of the destruction for these nations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Fir'aun and then he just points to some other nations, Waman Qablahu, nations before Pharaoh, like the nation of Samud, the nation of Ad, and Wal Mu'tafikat the cities that were overthrown, turned over, which means the nations of Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. All of these nations were destroyed because of rejecting the Day of Judgment and rejecting the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to remember the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the belief in the Day of Judgment, the belief in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be practical only once we believe in the messengers of Allah. Because those are the sources through which Anbiya alayhim salatu wasalam are the only source through which human beings learn who Allah is what are the attributes and the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what are the forms and the ways of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When those people rejected the message of Anbiya alayhim salatu wasalam, so clearly we can understand that they rejected the Day of Judgment, they rejected the books of Allah and they rejected the worships and different forms of worship to be 
worship, uh, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of that, they were destroyed. When we look at those nations, and we, especially as Muslims, when we read about those nations again and again in Quran, right away, a feeling might pass through our mind that makes us have a cold breath, nice breeze, and say, Alhamdulillah, I'm out of that. We are not of those who reject the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, who reject the teachings of Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. We believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We believe in all the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. Of course, it's true, and it's a fact that we believe in Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, and that should make us feel good. But we should not be just satisfied with that. There is much more to look at and realize that how much do we believe in Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam and how much we believe Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. There are two different things. One is believing in him and the second is believing them. Just like we say, believe me, doesn't mean you believe in me. That's not Iman, but believe me, trust me. Same thing, as we believe in Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, right away that requires that we believe Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam and we trust them. That simply means that now all the accountants of the world and people who are specialized in the economy, they all will get together and will make all the calculations in the world to make it as simple as possible, to make us realize and understand and believe that by using interest, you will always be successful. You can mm -hmm. always have your business, your home, your car, only if you take interest. And not using it, you will always be loser. You can't have a home, you can't have a business, you can't have a nice car, you can't do nothing in the world, so you will always be backward. On the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys the interest, and He increases the wealth from which sadaqat have been given. These people are making the calculations to us. They are showing us on the calculators that, look, you have $1,000. You give out $100. You are left only with $900. So on one hand, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, although you see 900, but now it's more than 1,000. And these people are telling us 900 is 900. can't be more than 1,000. How many of us, we would believe Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and still will give those hundred dollars out of our account, believing him that when he says Allah will put barakah in it, Allah will increase it, Allah will bless it, so I really trust him for it. And how many of us will run to the banks and say, here, put it in the saving account or checking account, whatever, and let me keep on collecting interest on it. I see it, it's increasing. So this is really believing Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. And we go a step further, we even have to believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in His oneness. We always say, La ilaha illallah. But do we really trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the very beginning of the book. At the beginning of the book, he told us, If you believe in me, you will have to believe in unseen things. People will show you a lot. But you have to reject all of what you see with your eyes. And trust me that what I'm telling you is true, although you cannot see it at this time. 
a person is showing us that here, you work here, and I'm making five, four, five hundred dollars a day. Another person says, believe me, at the end you will lose. Come here, I'll show you, I'll, I'm going to take you somewhere where you will make thousand dollars a day. Do you make it? No, I don't. Have you seen it? I haven't. So let me just go with this that I can see with my own eyes. This is the nature of a human being that you see something with your eyes, you trust it. Another thing is only a promise. You never know if it will materialize or not. But it all depends on the trust. If we trust, then of course we will believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he tells us, don't go for this. Now you will see a store where a person sells all the haram stuff. He's selling pork, he's selling uh, alcohol, he's selling all the haram things. And he says, I'm making so much. A person who trusts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, I cannot go for this. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's forbidden. He's going to destroy it. This is going to bring all the evils with it. I trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not going to take this. Those nations, they went to the peak of, dis of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messengers of Allah. And accordingly, they got the worst punishment. But we need to remember... To whatever limit we reject the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam, to that limit the person will be punished in the Akhirah. So if a person is rejecting the message of Allah, two person, then there is two person punishment over there. If there is hundred person for the disbelievers, then there is two person for this person also. So depending on how much we reject, this is how much the punishment is there. So we have to, after the shahada and after believing in Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to judge ourselves and see if we are really following the message of Allah. If we are following the message of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and if we are following the sunnahs of Anbiya Alaihi Wasallatu Wasallam or not. Because that also plays a big role there. And depending on that, it can be determined how much we are on the path of Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam and to what extent we are on the path of Wal-Ayazu Billah, Fir'aun, Thamud and Qarun and all of those people in those nations. As I will I, as always say, that is not only a cruise control that we put our, set the cruise of our Iman and then through our, our life we feel that I'm satisfied, the car is running on its speed and the, the, the path that I have set it on and now is not going to change. Each and every step of our life, it's affecting our Iman. And it's affecting our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a person will follow Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam, even if a person is playing with his family, playing with his children, talking to his relatives, if those things are done according to the ways of Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam, the ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, considering the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, even these things that he's doing in his life are getting closer to Anbiya alayhim salatu wassalam and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when we read these stories of those nations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not talking just as a history and he's not just addressing the disbelievers and kuffar that only kuffar should take lesson that Pharaoh was destroyed because he rejected. So all now we go and tell the kuffar that Pharaoh was destroyed when he, he rejected. So you people are going to be destroyed. No, the message is for us also that depending on how much we reject billah, and how much we accept, depending on that, we will be judged on the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, وَجَاءَ فِرْعَوْنُ وَمَنْ قَبْلَهُ وَالْمُؤْتَفِكَاتُ بِالْخَاطِيَةِ Pharaoh and the nations before him. وَالْمُؤْتَفِكَاتُ And the cities that were overturned and they were thrown upside down, they all committed a sin. What was the sin? That was the worst sin that human beings would commit in this life, which is called shirk and kufr. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to guide them to the straight path. Or at least send a message to them so that they can realize what is the straight path. So he sent the messengers to them. But when they got the messengers, فَعَصَوْ رَسُولَ رَبِّهِمْ They rejected the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَخَزَهُمْ أَخْزَةَ الرَّابِيَةِ So he got them into the strong punishment. أَخْزَةَ الرَّابِيَةِ What is the word Rabia means? Rabia is driven from the word Rabba Yerbu, and we know the word Riba, interest. Rabba Yerbu means for anything to grow, to swallow up, increase. This is what Riba means. And therefore, interest is called Riba, that you are getting increased. Increasing the amount of wealth that you will be taking back, comparing to what you have given. You give someone a loan, you give him $100, take $105 back from the person, you increase the amount that you're taking back from the person. So it's riba. أَخَذَهُمْ أَخْذَةَ rabia. He punished them, he got them into أَخْذَةَ rabia, a hole that was increased, which simply means it was one of the, it was worse punishment than the punishments of the nations that were before him or before them depending on how much they rejected pharaoh saw more miracles of musa alayhi salatu wasalam than some other nations allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him very peculiar miracles it was proven to him very peculiarly still not only that he rejected the messengers of Allah, in fact, he was claiming to be Allah himself, to be God. And when Musa alayhi salatu wasalam proved to him that there is Allah, there is a creator for this universe. So he said, Ana rabbukumul a'la. If there is any other Lord, then I am the highest of those. I am greater than the other lords if there is any other, any other lord that exists in the world. So because of that claim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَخَذَهُمْ أَخْذَةَ rabia. Now when we look at these nations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometime he mentions the nations on the name of Anbiya alayhim as-salatu wasalam. Sometimes he mentions those nations by the name of the worst person of the nation. And sometimes he mentions the name of the nation, he mentioned the nations by their own name, the name of the town or the name that they were known by. The whole nation of Pharaoh, they are mentioned just Fir'aun, that Pharaoh rejected. And he does not, in this ayah, he does not even mention his followers. But he does not mean only Pharaoh. The ayah is referring to all the people who were with him. They all rejected. They all rejected the message of Allah. But Allah talks only about one person. Why? He was the cause for the rest of the nation to reject the message of Allah. If he would have believed, the rest of them would believe. But that never means that other people are not going to be punished. They will be punished because of following him. But he was the cause for those people to go away from the straight path. A reminder for us that always remember you might be a good person as many times especially in this part of the world we hear it a lot oh that brother is very nice he's a very sincere person in fact most of the times you might realize that when people would like to backbite someone and they like to talk against someone put down someone they will say he's a very nice person he's a very sincere but and now after but that everything that comes after that but that's the main thing that he wanted to mention so just sincerity is not enough it's not enough to be sincere with all sincerity someone comes and slaps you and he says i was really sincere in my intention it doesn't help it the pain is still there 
And you will warn him that next time, make sure you don't do it if the, you take it the easiest way. And if he does it again and he sits, still he tells you and he tries to prove to you that he was very sincere. You won't take that for too long. Same thing. If we just try to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I'm very sincere. Okay, obey the ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Yeah, I'm very sincere. That's all we are repeating again and again, repeatedly. I'm very sincere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I don't just want your sincerity. I want practice. I want practical. I want you to be practical. Prove to me that you are sincere. Prove to the world that you are sincere. And this is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a criteria in Quran al kareem In kuntum tuhabboon Allah fattabi'uni. If you love Allah, then follow me, which means Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That will prove your sincerity, otherwise you can keep on claiming it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that you might be very sincere, but you start following a person who's making you do wrong things. Who's taking you away from the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who's taking you away from the ways of Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. Then irrespective of how much that person proves his sincerity and how much you think he might be sincere, you cannot follow the person. Do we think that all the people who followed Pharaoh, they used to think and they knew it for sure that this is not the right person and he is just making false claims. Most of them might be very thinking that he is very sincere in his claims and they really believe him. All the people who are misled out there and they go to the churches and they are following things that their priests are telling them. Do we think that these people are not sincere? You will find most of them are very sincere. But where does that sincerity take them? And where, what, what does it help them? So same thing, if we come into the fall of Islam, and then we'll just go out with one claim of our sincerity without any actions, and without following the ways of Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam, it does not help. Of course, the Iman will help in its by itself. But that just claim of sincerity will be of no help. Very simple ways that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam have mentioned in the hadith and since we talked about the subject, <coughs> I should just mention a few things about it. To know the sincerity of the person, you have to see the person from very close. See if this person is really in his private life, not when he's in the masjid, when not, not only when he's in public. In his private life, is he really a very God-fearing person? Is he a virtuous person? Do you see him refraining from all type of sins? One of the ways that the great people of the Ummah used to test people with was, they would talk to them against one of their enemies. And see if this person, what this person would respond about it. If this person will find a way for him now that, okay, he, he doesn't like the same person. So now let's both of us, let me just fill him up with all of these things. And he starts backbiting those people. And attacking those people. That simply means that this person has something wrong in his mind. It's against the claim of sincerity that he's making. Attacking others. So there are so many of these signs, as I, as I mentioned, seeing a person from close. You see, you stay with the person, you find that the person does not care about Salah with the Jama'ah. When he's in public, he might even give a lecture about how important it is to perform the Salah with the Jama'ah. And here in his private life, he doesn't care about the prayers. He doesn't care about the jama'ah. 
that simply shows the difference between the talk and between the practice. And now irrespective how sincere this person is, practically is not a person. Yes, we are not going to say anything about his faith and Iman. MashaAllah, good Muslim brother. But if it comes to following the person, that's somewhere where we have to give it a second thought. A person comes to the masjid, has all the time, and you see him wasting time here and there, did not even care about sunnah mu'akkada, the emphasized sunnah prayers. He might be very sincere, but as far as when it comes to following the person, we really have to give it a second thought. Which is telling us in his private life, he does not care about following the ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And taqwa simply means following the ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There can be any way or other way of taqwa than following the sunnahs and the ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَعَصَوْ رَسُولَ رَبِّهِمْ فَأَخَذَهُمْ أَخْزَةَ الرَّابِيَةِ they rejected the Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam, the prophets of the Lord. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them with a strong punishment. And as I said, the purpose of the ayahs is to tell us, don't hurt the feelings of your prophet. Don't reject the message of your prophet. Don't turn away from the ways of your prophets. From the ways of Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another surah very clearly, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, he's calling upon us, us, me and you. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, la takunu kal ladheena adaw Musa. Don't be like those who were hurting Musa alayhi salatu wassalam. They were hurting the feelings of Musa alayhi salatu wassalam. So don't hurt the feelings of your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The way those people, Bani Israel, were hurting the feelings of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Is this ayah only for Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een? Of course not. There is no ayah of Quran al kareem that we say it was revealed only for those 50 or 60 years and after that is not practical ayah anymore. All the ayahs of Quran al kareem are for believers till the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing us also. Don't hurt the feelings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a hadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Every Thursday, every Thursday, the deeds of the umba, ummah, which simply means the general message and news about the ummah, is presented to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course, depending on what the ummah is doing, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam either gets happy with the ummah or he gets upset with the ummah, depending on the deeds. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is getting informed of what the ummah is doing. As we simply know it, from hundreds of hadith that whenever a person sends blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa angels take that dua that we make and that blessing that we make from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they take it as a gift and present that to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa with the name of the person with the name of the person that this person has sent this for you People might sometime question that millions of people might be sending blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How can he get the names of all of those people at the same time and know who, do, who these people are? But we have to understand, never compare that world with this world. That's totally different world. Just think about 20, 30 years back, and if you go further down, 100, 200 years back, people would not even have thought about, you will have a picture in your hand, you will have a letter in your hand, 
You scan it in your computer and in minutes you can spread it throughout the world and whole millions of people can have that letter in seconds. Millions of people will be seeing that very same picture in second that you had it only a minute ago, it was in your hand. You got it throughout the world. You got that picture in every corner of the world, in every home of the world, normally. Uh, as I think 80% of the people now might have computers. So you get it in every computer there. So, if this is what we are doing and we are able to do it in this life, so of course, things that are going on in that life are, told, are much beyond the power of this life and human beings will have much more power and of course the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something we cannot even imagine what it is and how it is and what, all we can say as we know as it is unlimited. There is no limit to it. What is it that he cannot do? So, if all of this is getting to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is no, nothing impossible in that dictionary over there, in the dictionary of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is advising the ummah not to hurt the feelings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like the other nations did. إِنَّا لَمَّا طَغَ الْمَاءُ حَمَلْنَاكُمْ فِي الْجَارِيَةِ Indeed, when the water overflowed beyond its limit. طَغَ الْمَاءُ Most of the translate, translators have translated the ayah in different ways. But I think this might be the closest translation to the meaning of the ayah. Because we talked about the word طَغَ in the previous ayahs. What was the ayah? كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ وَعَادٌ بِالْقَارِعَةِ فَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِالطَّاغِيَةِ At that time, بِالطَّاغِيَةِ is the same word driven from the same root. We talked about what is طَغَى. طَغَى simply means going beyond the limits. When the water started overflowing, and not only was overflowing, طَغَى went beyond its limits in overflowing. And when was that? It was at the time of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. When the storm came, and Quran speaks about it in such a beautiful way, Hatta ida ja'a amruna wa faratta nur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that the water started gushing from every corner and from everywhere. It was raining from under the ground. The